Hi everyone, I'm Joanna Penn and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how I use ProWritingAid as part of my editing process. Now I write fiction and non-fiction, I write thrillers, dark fantasy, crime, horror, short stories, memoir and self-help for writers and I use ProWritingAid as part of the process for every book and short story alongside working with my human editor Kristen. So why use an editing tool anyway? Shouldn't you just learn all the rules and apply them yourself? Well, however you choose to publish, we all want our books to be the best they can be. And what ProWritingAid can do is help you improve your manuscript before you work with a human editor. And I'd really rather pay Kristen, my editor, to improve the bigger things around the story, like the flow and the character development and those kind of things, as well as looking at the small things for sure. But I'd rather give her a cleaner manuscript. And I'll show you in this demo what ProWritingAid can do. So ProWritingAid works wherever you write. It can integrate with Word and Google Docs and Notion. I use Scrivener. You can also use it online. I'm going to show you a chapter with Scrivener to start with and if you don't use Scrivener the functionality is the same. This is one of my chapters opened in ProWritingAid and I find it easier to do chapter by chapter with the software and I use it after I finished my first draft. So once I've finished the draft, I will open the chapter in ProWritingAid and I will go through the various uh, suggestions and see what I can fix up. So let's have a look at some of the things it might find. So I find the simplest thing to fix, uh, first of all, is anything that's in light blue. Here's an example. And yes, it's missing an apostrophe. So I can just click that and it's going to fix it up. Here, here's another example, is uh, an extra space, so I can remove that too. Now, what's important is you can ignore things, so you don't have to fix everything. Now, over on the right-hand side, you can see it's essentially looking at the work and it gives me a score, and if I improve the score, then my writing is better, uh, according to the Pro Writing Aid rules. So let's look at some of the other things uh, that are going on. Here's a, a red, which is a typo, and again, I can just fix that up with one click. And I can save this and it's going to save it back into my Scrivener document. Let's look at some of the other things. So this sentence, he could barely make out the imprinted words and he couldn't pull it down from the shelf until he was clear what he might be working with. So I think might be working with is still correct um, because that correction isn't right so I'm just going to ignore that and then the line disappears. This is uh, a very good example of common issues which is when we use more passive writing and ProWritingAid will try and make it more active. Now sometimes what was funny is one manuscript I went overboard and just accepted all of the changing to active verbs and my editor said I think you've just gone and accepted way too much of the passive uh, checking. So this is appropriate sometimes but it's not appropriate every time. So we could change this. Um, the head librarian had assigned Johan um, to that and it's going to change that. Um, you could leave it, you could undo it, whatever you want. And then some of the other things, it will try and make things tighter. And this is very good, particularly if you overwrite. So again, I could fix that. Uh, and then with more than 12, with over 12, again, it's reducing the number of words, making the writing a lot tighter, which I really like. One of the interesting things they have is this rephrase and uh, sparks idea. So let's say you don't like dim light. You can rephrase that and it will give you some options. So it's taken the whole line there and it's going to say, OK, well, actually, this is quite nice. Dust particles might be better than dust motes, actually. So dust particles floated and twirled in the dim light coming through the library storeroom window. Uh, it, this one rephrases, it changes the sentence around. So that's quite interesting. You can also look at other ways of rephrasing. For example, if you want more sensory detail, there they're putting a, a character in. So I think what this enables you to do is envision your writing in different ways. You can also shorten things, you can expand things, 
if you want to. So I'm just going a bit further down in the manuscript to fix a few more things. So here you can see there's a comma. Uh, the boxes were stacked. Again, it wants to rephrase that. I'm going to leave that. You can see what it's going to do. Now, again, you can actually uh, upload a style guide so that you can have your series style, for example, or you can just use these um, suggestions. But let's uh, add some more of the sparks that is also quite interesting. So let's pick sparks. And then what we're gonna do is, I mean, you can do things like make it first person, which is super useful. If you get edits back and it's like, you should probably rewrite this, or you could, um, you know, this needs to be past tense or present tense, any of this kind of thing. And this uh, uses AI tools to do that for you. What it can also do is add, say, emotional detail. So let's have a look at that. What this has done is taken my couple of sentences and it's expanded the idea in a more emotional way. Now, as ever with AI writing, what I would do is I might take bits and bobs of this or I might use it to inspire some of my other um, ideas. But you can see this is quite interesting in that it's given me some more ideas around, OK, well, how could I actually show more melancholy in this room? The suitcases, once sturdy and full of life's adventures, now appeared worn and weathered. The faded colours spoke of countless journeys taken and memories made, but now they seem to sag under the weight of forgotten dreams. Now, I would not use the weight of forgotten dreams. That is definitely a cliche. But I think what you've got here is some interesting ideas. I could expand this to be more than a few sentences to make it more emotional. And now I'm reading this, I'm like, actually, this is this is quite interesting. What we want is to give more of a sense that these are the possessions of people who are who are dead in the war, basically. Um, its mane, once vibrant and full of life, had turned the sombre shade of grey, mirroring the dusty neglect. So there's, I mean, there's some interesting ideas, uh, again, that you could use. Um, and there's lots of options for the, um, the sparks. Let's try it with some action because at the moment we're just uh, in this little room and there's some uh, leftover articles. Right, so this has really just taken this in a completely different direction. This has definitely added some action. There's a, uh, a figure that's just arrived and it's, it's all gone a little bit exciting. <laughs> the child's wooden rocking horse springs to life. Um, which is fascinating. But this is the thing, you can get ideas. And m what writing with AI generally means is finding ideas that will help you continue. So you see there's lots of ideas there. And um, again, you get a certain amount per day. And then you can also uh, upgrade and get more um, outside of the standard license. So let's look at some other things. Again, I can make sure all of these things on the right move into the green by going through the whole chapter and fixing everything. So for example, here's another, um, he lifted the edge of it. Yep, he lifted the edge. So again, it's going to slowly uh, take the chapter into uh, better writing. But let's look at the reports because these are really interesting. So this is where you can actually get some more editorial help, so more overview. Let's first start with the summary. Summary report goes through an overview of the chapter you've selected and depending on how much you've done, if you've done the whole book. But actually <laughs> what it's done already is tell me that the, tip, the document is set to general. You'll get better results if you choose a more specific genre. And this is this actually is a really good tip. So I'm, I showed you that so I can go back in and do it. So that is over here on the right hand side. It, the default is general. But what you can do is say, actually, I'm doing academic writing or I'm doing creative writing. So I'm actually going to change this to um, creative and thriller because what that's going to do is change the way that it kind of marks my score. Um, there's lots of things. And, and if you don't know what things are, like glue index, for example, you can click on the help and it's going to tell you uh, what you need to do. There'll be a video. So coming back to the reports now, 
So we're back in the summary and it is going, okay, this is, this is good. <laughs> but then it's like, here's where your document might need some work and you can go in and fix those things. What I also like is uh, how it will pick out things. It will tell you particularly what you might want to change. It will give you an overall writing score. This is good. You haven't overused the passive voice. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that definitely used to be one of my issues. So there are lots of things in these reports, but just a few things I like to have a look at. The sentence length check. What you want is variability. And you can see here that my sentences are varied. Some are short, some are long. And that, uh, as it says here, affects your reader's experience. So that's a good check. I also like to have a look at pacing because this is an opening chapter and it is slow pacing and I have some chapters that are slow and some that are fast. It is a thriller but this is just this is actually the the, the prologue as such or the the first chapter which is a slow discovery within this Austrian library of this room and the enigma machine and a message in the enigma machine. This is my book Spirit of Destiny. So that's actually a good check and you can have a look at all these other reports. So this is a critique report and as it says this is by an AI model that has been guided by a human but it's not intended to be a replacement for a human and I think these types of reports are really useful again before you send them to your human editors because the more we can improve the book the better. So first of all it says you know strengths the author effectively establishes a sense of mystery and intrigue the writing is descriptive okay that's all good uh, here's a bit of the plot here's some characters a bit of tension the point of view is consistent throughout the piece. You could do is go down to potential improvements. So provide more background information on Johan to further develop his character. Yep, absolutely. Clarify the significance of the hidden room earlier. Fair enough. Um, explore the emotional impact. Consider adding dialogue. Uh, in this case, he is alone, so there is no dialogue. Um, but yes, I think what can be good about these reports is it can help you before you send to a human. So there are lots more reports you can do, uh, including uh, cliches. Let's have a look at this one. So it has picked up a few here. Uh, his heart sank. Yeah, I mean, that is a classic. So I should probably go in and fix that. Um, so going in and sort of picking out these different things, redundancies, it's going to help you find them and then fix them. In fact, I'll go to his heart sank there. OK, so here is this is a potential cliche and I could rephrase that into something else. There's also a plagiarism report, which I think can be really useful if that is uh, something you're concerned about. Um, there's, there's just so many reports. Okay, so let's say I've done all the changes, I've made all the changes and I make sure I save everything um, and uh, I just use the command s or control s whatever that is on your computer and once I've done every chapter you know I, I will say move on to the next chapter and I'll do that one and essentially I will go through every single chapter make sure I save it and then I will close out of pro writing aid and go back into Scrivener export that and send that to my editor. So I've only been able to show you a few things today in this video demo, but as you can see, there is so much functionality and you can use as little or as much as you like to improve your writing. And as I said, I still work with a human editor as well, but Pro Writing Aid helps me make my manuscript the best it can be before I send it to my editor. So you can find out more information at prowritingaid.com or you can use my affiliate link for 10% off at thecreativepen.com forward slash pro writing aid and the link is below. So happy writing and happy editing.